was told by someone else that I had robbed the guys. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Raw and Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know what time it is. Suente la suburban. We're about to take a ride. Welcome back to another episode of Wrong Strong. JC here, your host. And yes, today is JC's Chronicles. Today is story time with JC. You know, I had I had been I had been dealing for a little bit. I want to say for about a year. And things were going real smooth. Things were going good, making money. Um, I ended up flying to Vegas to get married, and and you know everything uh, going really really well for me. It was going. I was making a lot of money. Yeah, I was making a lot of enemies, a lot of stuff. Other stuff was going bad in, in my <laughs> in my personal life and life in general. But I was making money. Then one day, my connect. I went to go see the guys. And when I stepped into the house, something just didn't didn't seem right. It, it seemed the energy sense it just seemed off. Uh, it, it was just it was it was weird. And when I when I you know was looking at the, the product, I, I got a, a bad feeling. So I gave it back to him and I told him I'll be back. His his response was, well just just take it. Just he wanted me to take that one. Just take it and you know, let me know if it's if it's yay or nay. But then that just like kind of like set me off right away because I knew something was something was up because it, it was never like that like that easy. You know, I always had to like shake and bake and fucking just weasel my way into better better prices, better deals, even to get it fronted like that from them. So I knew something was up. So I, I left right away and a couple days later my my dude from mexico calls me and says you know what did you do and i was like what do you mean what did i do upset with me because he he had thought he was told by someone else that i had robbed the guys i knew something was up like right away i felt like i felt the energy i felt everything and he's like you you have to you have to fix this you know, not only for him, but you know, for me as well. He's the one that introduced me. He's the one that connected me and everything. So, honestly, man, I didn't even know what to do or how to even look for the boss. This is before I met the main boss, the main main one. You know, um, so what did I do? I, I, I jumped on a plane. I flew to Guadalajara. I ended up in Michoacan. Uh, I ended up taking the bus to El Aguaje, and as soon as I got off the bus, I, I got picked up by his uh, people. I'm not gonna lie, like I, when I jumped on that plane and I uh, and I was going to Mexico, I knew that I might not come back. But also, I knew that if I got given the chance, that I could, you know, move up the ladder. Uh, Meet, meet, meet the boss, but you know, like just move up the ladder. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I, I wanted to move up the ladder. I wanted to make more money. I wanted to to move more stuff and, and that would have been a, a win for me. And the sad part is that I was willing to put my life on the line for it. When I was picked up by his people and you know, taken to his house, I just pretty much, I told him, hey, you know, I flew all the way out here, and I, I, I just came to tell you that it, it wasn't, it wasn't me. And man, he, he took a liking to me after that. Like he, he really, really enjoyed that show of respect. How I just jumped on a plane, didn't even know where I was going, <laughs> didn't even know where, where he lived, nothing. I just knew that if I showed up 
you know, uh, he would find find me, you know. So it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, man. It was an experience. <laughs> Things got better. <laughs> he cleaned his house. He did what he, I had. I started to go there on a more regular basis. I started to fly in, and on my third trip in, I happened to fly in with one of my who I thought was a friend of mine at the time. He flew in with me and I introduced, I, ran, I made one of the biggest uh, street hustler mistakes you could ever make. I introduced him to my connect and guess what happened? Yes, they started working behind my back and they started making money and slowly started trying to push me out. But I had already moved on to bigger and better things after that so it happens, dude. But you know me, I don't know shit. I'll tell you this, guys. If you're in a dope game, it's never gonna end well. Don't trust nobody, not even your friends. Because at the end of the day, evil chooses evil. And evil likes money, power, and greed. Yes, it's always gonna end bad. It's never gonna end good. I share my story, so hopefully, hopefully, you see through the bullshit and you open up your eyes and your mind and think with your heart. My name is JC. I am Wrong and Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. But if you live it right, one life is all you need. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.